Hello guys, this is Lena Lee, my Yankee 2 Hotel. I'm terribly late to this contest and this is WPX Radio Teletype Contest. RTTY or ready as I hear some of you saying. But it wasn't my purpose to take part in this contest. My purpose was to try my recently built QRP Labs QMX transceiver out in the RTTY contest and to see how this nice product from QRP Labs is doing in this one of the most popular digital modes which RTTY is to my mind after the FT8 and this is one of the oldest uh, digital modes really if not the, if not the, the oldest digital mode every day you don't meet very many stations anymore on this mode on the bands but when there are big international contests totally devoted for this mode uh, there is lots of lots of tons of stations on the bands so right in here is real dx japan alpha 6 golf charlie echo okay repeat again Yes, I got confirmation. Thank you, Japan Alpha City Golf Charlie Echo. Yeah, this is really good. 5 watts output, QMX into a end fan half wave antenna. I got report from Japan in the WPX contest. Another Japan, another Japanese station, Juliet Radio for Oscar Zulu Radio. On 40 meter band. What a strong signal. Okay, now guys, let's leave the other me taking part in the contest and us, let's see what's important to know about the setup I was running in this contest, meaning the QRP Labs QMX transceiver and FLDG software. Stay tuned. For those of you who don't know what the QMX is, I just can tell that this is a mixture of two famous products by the QRP Labs. The famous CW only monoband transceiver QCX and multi-band digital only transceiver the QDX. That's why QMX, like merger or marriage as the owner uh, owner of the QRP Labs, Hans G0 UPL, loves to say. At the moment, the QMX transceiver is uh, multiband, which is uh, covering one version, covering the so called low bands, like uh, mine, uh, from 80 to 20 meter band. Uh, and the high band version uh, covers from 20 up, up to 10 meter bands. So the same as the QDX transceiver does. As it comes to the modes, uh, the QMX transceiver uh, at the moment only covers two types of modes. So CW and the digital modes. It is designed and it's got all the hardware necessary in, on the PCB already. It only lacks the right software to become a multi-mode transceiver too, meaning the single sideband uh, SSB gonna be included soon too. How soon? I don't know. Uh, at the time of filming this uh, video, which is beginning of March 2024. Why have I chosen the QMX transceiver to experiment with the RTTY mode, radio teletype mode? Uh, because uh, uh, you can run RTTY also on QDX and there's a video uh, in my, on, on my channel elsewhere, there's a link in the description, uh, you can run uh, RTTY too on QDX, uh, but it's not that convenient because the QDX has got no VFO tuning, like, you know, like a VFO knob, 
uh, and QMX transceiver has got a VFO and a knob and uh, everything you need, you know, to change to change the frequency. And RGTY, as you perfectly know, uh, it it does take you know to tune. It's not enough just to see all the stations in the passband of the of the of your transceiver, like like for FT8. So RTTY, a lot like CW, you need to tune the band. You need to find a RTTY station, tune on it. That's why the QMX is much more convenient to use uh, compared to the QDX uh, on this digital RTTY mode. QMX transceiver uh, has got a little bit different uh, connection to your computer. It's a USB cable, but it's not the type of USB cable as uh, you might be used with your QDX. You know, on, on the QDX, this square uh, bulky connector of the USB cable, which is called USB-B type of cable, goes into the transceiver uh, and the other side the USB-A traditional uh, USB connector goes into your computer. On QMX transceiver though uh, there's a little bit uh, modification and improvement. It's no longer the USB cable B needed but it's, uh, it's USB cable C needed. The C on the transceiver side and the A type of USB cable on the computer side. You need to have a cable to be USB-C to USB-A in order to connect the QMX to your computer. And we see full of strong stations. But you know, even with this such a strong signals, enormous signals, but the QMX is doing pretty well, coping pretty well. It's not like, you know, the whole band is shut because of the one strong station somewhere five kilohertz <laughs> away. No, the whole bandwidth of three kilohertz is, is full of strong stations and all of them are, you know, I can copy all of them. That's good. The dynamic range of QMX shows itself very, very nicely. Oscar Kilo One Papa. Let's try to call. Check station. Okay, I'm getting a report. I give my report. Okay. All right, I got confirmed. So, log QSO. Now, a few words about the software and how to configure it, right? In order to receive and transmit RTTY signals flawlessly. After, you know, having some brainstorm and experimenting, I decided to run FL Digi on my uh, PC laptop. And I must stress on my tiny PC laptop. This is Chewy mini PC with just only eight inch screen on it, so not not much of real estate, you know, for to accommodate the user interface. And this actually one of the major reasons why have I decided to go uh, for FL Digi. It allows you know to configure uh, the user interface, you know, and it adapts the size of the windows, the size of the general screen of everything you see, you know, I need to use uh, to adapt easily to the size of your monitor, of your screen. So if you've got a big monitor, it adapts, you know, easily to the big monitor. If you've got, if, if you got small as I do, it, it adapts equally nicely to a small screen here. And on this small screen, I can pretty comfortably see, you know, pretty big or big enough uh, the receive window, the transmit window, the monitor ring window, practically enough to, to see amount of waterfall. Initially, I was trying and it's still possible to use and to run my uh, another favorite uh, contesting program N1MM Plus logger it, it proved to be pretty complicated you know to to run it uh, to see it and you know many small windows which are you know 
crowded on my small screen I didn't like this uh, even uh, even if uh, the N1MM as a contesting logger is better than FL Digi you can't run FT8 on FL Digi that's that's right but uh, you can run all the other digital uh, modes and so having in mind this having in mind the very comfortable user interface the ability to adapt to a small screen uh, this and the ability still to be used as a contest program uh, there are macros you you know there are a list of contests you can choose in the settings so like i've chosen the wpx rtty contest so that's all possible uh, on fl digi which is which is perfect which is good in general the fl digi operates rtty using afsk or audio frequency shift king or so to say sound card digital way of creating digital signal all right so now it's not a special call sign normal call sign dm7xx click and it goes here to the call box okay let's try to call oh no good i got it i'm getting number okay I got thank you that's that means it's okay okay log it fl digi and qmx transceiver uh, is very nice combo they they go together very very good so now a few words about the configuration of the fl digi in order to have it you know running smoothly by the way it's the same configuration valid for the qmx transceiver as it is for the qdx transceiver make sure in the device manager you know that you are connected and recognized by your device manager and in the device manager you see ports now usb serial devices on com port 9 so that's in my case in your case it could be different uh, so please remember this this port number you're going to need it in the configuration and then configuration itself is pretty easy you, you click on configure uh, tab on the fldg windows uh, configuration dialog opens uh, operator station you fill in all the data about you your your operating facilities and then the most important is rig control you go to rig control and here you have to choose which way you're gonna control your rig by and you can choose either you do it by by the means of another utility program fl rig uh, if you have it installed together with fl digi and control your transceiver by the means from fl rig uh, you can do it uh, by cat directly from the fl digi uh, uh, you can do it by hamlip hamlip is my favorite so to say application to control uh, the transceiver when you choose hamlip it's very important to check the use hamlip box off otherwise it's not gonna work simply so after you check the use hamlip box you choose the rig uh, i chosen the rig ts 440s the same as for qdx i guess uh, then a device sits on the connected to the com port number nine so on the right part of the screen so you remember you know which port uh, it's connected to from the device manager ptt via hamlip command you have to check this box off too that's that's okay that's and that's all you click on save it's saved the configuration uh, then important thing then you go to sound card uh, you go to devices there you, you see your audio devices here so uh, first thing you need to uh, to check uh, the port audio box off first that's very important and then uh, for capture and playback you choose in the drop down menu you choose uh, digital audio interface qdx transceiver so the qmx transceiver is recognized as qdx transceiver uh, you choose the qdx transceiver for capture and you choose the qdx transceiver for playback audio device shared by audio 
alerts and uh, RX monitor, so it's speakers. The native speakers uh, of, of, of my PC and you save it and you're done. Okay, you close it down. And then extremely important thing on the right side down on the screen. You see two zeros here. Transmit level attenuator in dBs. Transmit level attenuator by default is established at minus three level by default. So if you leave it as it is and you do all the configuration, you, you, you do everything correctly, you see all the sound cards, everything's fine, except one thing, you, you're not gonna be able to transmit easily because of this transmit level attenuator engaged. You should make it zero and you should save the setting. Otherwise, if you don't save it, next time you open the FLDJ up, you see minus three again and you, you, you're you not able to transmit again. All right, the Polish station, special course on SN40, Radio Victor Golf. So it's two ciphers in the call sign and it's okay so polish special call sign gave me good luck in 73. well making this rgty contest experiment running qmx transceiver and fldg combo was a great fun for me i have made around 60 qso's in during some three or four hours of participation I actually uh, got hooked on RTTY contesting, I think, uh, and I even made, you know, uh, the RTTY contest list for the rest of the year 2024, and I will certainly take part in a more serious way, you know, not experimenting, but more contesting. Uh, so in, in, in one or two or three or four of these contests during the coming months, it was uh, lots of fun for me. I hope it was some food for thought for you. So please leave your comments in the comment section. What do you think about RTTY, about contesting, about running QRP? But RTTY is, you know, still alive and kicking. And I'm very glad that, you know, there are still uh, big and smaller and bigger international contests where you can find a lot of movement, a lot of dynamic and, uh, well, you can have lots of fun there. So, tell me what you think uh, all about it in the comment section. Else, please consider subscribing if you like this video and you don't want to miss, you know, old running, new videos coming. So, please consider subscribing. Uh, I'll be very grateful for that. So far, thanks for watching. 73, see you in my next videos. This is Linus, Limoyanki 2 Hotel. Cheerio!